Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Saturday to you. Come on in and suit up. Welcome to the global living room where we come together to learn how to live beyond the virus. And this is day 53. We used to be here daily, now we're here weekly, and it is day 53, and I am so glad to see you. So come on in and suit up. Let me know where you're at, and good morning, Houston. What we're suiting up this morning with is choice, because choice is our power. So as you come in, I want to know what I'm choosing for myself is, what I'm choosing for myself is. What I'm choosing for myself is, come on in and suit up with your choice this morning. What I'm choosing for myself is, we sometimes underestimate the power of choice or we think we don't have choice. Yes, happy Saturday. LA, you up early this morning. Good for you. Good morning. Good morning, Chicago. What I'm choosing for myself is joy. Come on. What are you choosing for yourself? And the reason I give you a sentence, what I'm choosing or what I'm feeling or where I am, is so that the brain can calculate and make a new impression on your consciousness. So it's not just peace, joy, love, clarity, you know, healing. What I'm choosing gives you a syntax so that you will remember. Good morning, Boston. Grand rising to you. Good morning, yes. What I'm choosing for myself, Broken, Connecticut. What I'm choosing for myself, LA. What I'm choosing for myself. And take a breath and go in so that you're choosing it from the core of your being and not from your head. Good morning, St. Croix, Kansas City, South Florida, Cleveland. Come on, what I'm choosing for myself. Everybody's saying good morning to the global community. Schenectady, Toronto. Good morning, Peru. Good morning, Peru. Now, I don't even know what Vacaville is. I don't even know where that is. Be more. Good morning, Dallas, Nashville. What I'm choosing for myself. Come on, let's suit up. What I'm choosing for myself. Because we're in a time right now where you got to make some choices. If you think you're just going to sit around and allow stuff to happen, you are sadly mistaken, Singapore. Welcome. Welcome to this global, global living room. This is a global living room, and we're learning how to live beyond the virus. And this has been some week. Has this been a week or what? Oh, my God. Between the protests with the youngins out there and Mr. Floyd's funeral and just the energy. Things are opening up. They out there with no mask. Lord have mercy. The Netherlands and England. Good morning. What I'm choosing for myself. That's what's on the floor this morning. Come on. What I'm choosing for myself is go down New Orleans, get down in there and breathe. And what I'm choosing for myself, yes, I want you all to know yesterday I, I was doing grandmother duty. I had my two uh, teenage grandsons. Lord, what I'm choosing for myself is sanity. <laughs> Bless their hearts. They are, they are beautiful spirits. Let me tell you, 14 and 15. And one of them said to me yesterday, he said, do you believe in the third eye? <laughs> Only Iyala Van Zandt's grandson would say, do you believe in the third eye? <laughs> oh, we had such a good time. They were wonderful. They helped me do some work. Good morning, Philly. Yes, yeah, so I was on grandmother duty. So what I'm choosing for myself today is sanity, okay? What I'm choosing for myself is clarity. Come on in. What you're choosing for yourself this morning? What are you choosing? And then we get to live into it, Brooklyn. We get to live into it, Cleveland. We get to live into it. Come on, think. Go in. Not one word. Not one word. Give me the whole sentence, what I'm choosing for myself, so that we can create a syntax and a groove in the consciousness, what I'm choosing for myself. Because once you put it out there, what I am choosing for myself, or what I'm choosing for myself, you're going to create that, okay? Because we know about the power of I am. So you're coming in and you're making a clear, conscious choice as we end this week and move into our next week. What I'm choosing for myself is, 
What I'm choosing for myself is joy, moment by moment. Good morning, Minnesota. Good morning and welcome. What I'm choosing for myself now is forgiveness for my mistakes. Beautiful. Sedona, I love you, Sedona. If I was getting on a plane, I'd be right out there. Scottsdale, you're not far from Sedona. <laughs> yeah, clarity. Yes, come on. Choose it. Choose it. Choice is your power. And so very often we think I didn't have a choice. You always have a choice. The thing is, are you choosing consciously? Are you choosing unconsciously? Are you choosing by default? Or by you, are you choosing not to choose? Okay? That's what we're talking about. When I'm choosing for myself. When I'm choosing for myself. Yes. This has been a rough week. So I'm, what I'm choosing for myself is clarity. What I'm choosing for myself is purpose. What I'm choosing for myself is rest. What I'm choosing for myself is uh, fun. What I'm choosing for myself is to put my air conditioner on. Oh, my Lord, it got hot overnight. <laughs> yeah, come on in. What are you choosing for yourself? What are you choosing? Yes, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, perfect health. Yes, come on. What I'm choosing for myself. Don't forget to choose you a, a loving partner if you want one. You've been by yourself for a couple of months. <laughs> you might need a little help. <laughs> What I'm choosing for myself. Yeah, some hot, good loving. Come on, choose it. If you want it, choose it. Yes, come on, choose it. <laughs> Don't think it's just going to show up. You got to choose it. Yes, 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 yes. I'm choosing a, 20, a lover 20 years younger than me. <laughs> come on, choose it for yourself. Not if you're married. If you're married, you got, you got a lover, okay? <laughs> Good. I love it. Just come on in and choose. I'm choosing to be fearless. Yes. I'm choosing to be great. I do choose a partner to share with. Yes. Come on. And whatever it is, I'm choosing wealth. I'm choosing abundance. I'm choosing financial freedom. I'm choosing safety in my body. Yes. I'm choosing. I'm choosing. Lake Worth Beach. I don't know where that is. Good morning, Illinois. Yeah. Come on. Choose it. I'm choosing strong education. Yes. How my men doing out there? I'm a man and I'm choosing. Let me see that. I'm a man and I'm choosing. I'm telling you this masculine energy that's around right now and everything that's going on, it's starting to shift now into feminine energy. And that's why you see the, the grace and the mercy and the lifting of the, of the uh, what do they call those things? The lifting of the uh, curfews. Yeah, and a little softer, but the masculine energy was really kind of, ooh, it was a little, a lot of testosterone out there for a minute, yeah? Uh-huh, all of those um, military people with the shields and the bullets and the, oh my God. So I'm a man and I'm choosing what? Come on, let me see. Come on, Boca Raton. Ooh, I love me some Boca Raton. Mm -mm -mm. I'm choosing what I'm choosing for myself. Don't give me one word. One word is the ego giving you an escape route. Uh-uh. What I'm choosing for myself is, what I'm choosing is, I'm a man and I'm choosing what? What are you choosing, man? What are you choosing? I know these men are so quiet and they don't, they like to be hiding in the, Albania, good morning, yeah, uh, like to be hiding in the darkness. Come on, what I'm choosing for myself is self-appreciation. I love that. I'm a man and I'm choosing what? I'm a man and I'm choosing financial wealth and prosperity and clarity, yes. What are you choosing for yourself? Yes, I choose to win. I choose victory. Yes, come on. That's good. Yes, I'm choosing to heal my marriage. Yes, come on. I'm choosing divine composure. I'm with you on that one. Yes, come on. I'm a man and I'm choosing. I don't see not one man on this thread. Where are the men? Okay. Where are the men? I'm a man. There. Thank you. Woo. <laughs> I'm getting ready to say I'm a man and I'm choosing to be courageous. Good. I'm I'm because I'm I'm a man and I'm choosing positivity. Good. And I'm getting a little scared. We need you. We need you, man. We need you standing up. We need you strong. We need you solid. We need you making clear, conscious choices. You are the protectors. You are the providers. You you are the master thought. So we need men with clear minds right now because we're heading into a we're heading into a, a, a wonderful time. Remember, I told you back on day I don't know 19 or 14 or 19 of the of the messages that the world as we knew it was over. All right, everybody's loaded in. Good. What I'm choosing is wealth. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
great, grand, and glorious rising to you on this beautiful Saturday. Welcome to our global living room, the antiviral message day number 53, living beyond the virus. And we come here together to live together, grow together, love together. Yes. Yes, we come together to, to choose together because things are changing and we don't want to miss anything. We want to be fully present, fully involved in the changes that are unfolding. So we come together to do our work together, to anchor a new positive energy on the planet together. And I don't know about you, but I am excited. <laughs> I'm choosing enthusiasm. I'm choosing excitement. We are suiting up with choice today, understanding that choice is our power. Yeah? And so we begin. Come on, let's breathe. Just fall into the fullness of your breath. Nice long inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose and relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your belly, relax your hips and find the rhythm, the natural rhythm of your breath. Find it wherever it is, whatever it is. Familiarize yourself with the natural rhythm of your breath. Know what it feels like to be present in the breath in this moment. And as you become more familiar with the natural rhythm of your breath, you'll become more aware of when you're out of rhythm when you're out of alignment. So find your natural rhythm and relax into it. Today I want us to do a body scan because we've seen a lot, we've heard a lot this week, we've, we've witnessed a lot this week and we cannot underestimate the impact of the energy that we take in through our optical uh, instruments, our eyes, yeah? So breathe. And I want you just for a moment to focus your attention on your feet. Just focus your attention on your feet. See how they feel. See if you can feel the energy from the tip of your toes to your heel. And see how it feels. And if there's any tightness, any tension, any, any jitterness, I don't know what the word is. If they're jittery, if they're sore, if they're achy, take a breath. Pull that energy up and let it out. Move into your ankles now. Just focus your attention on your ankles. See what you feel there. Slowly, gently, with great awareness and attention, move up the ankle into the calf. Now stay in the calves for a moment because whether you've been standing a lot or sitting a lot or walking or running, check your calves. What's the energy in your calves right now? Are they tight? Are they tense? Are they open? And if there's anything there that doesn't feel at peace, take a breath and exhale. Move up to your knee. Check your knees. I know some of us have taken up residence with arthritis. Mr. Arthritis. And those knees are a little cranky, but that's okay. We're going to love on it. Focus on your knees. And see if you can feel the energy as it runs from your knee to your ankle. Just see if you can feel it and see how it feels. Can you feel the flow? Can you feel the energy from your knees to your ankles? And if it feels tight, tense, tingly, whatever it may feel, take a breath and let it go. Now move into your thighs now. You'd be surprised 
where we will hold and harbor and hide energy. And we've been in a lot of energy this week, a lot of energy, okay? Between the protests and Mr. Floyd's funeral and all of the things that we've seen and heard. Ladies, as you move into your thighs, I want you to move right up into your hips and just check the energy right in your hips. If you got little saddlebags or if you don't, just check your hips right in that hip joint. Check and see how that feels. If you feel anything that's tight or distorted or just take a breath and let it out. See if you can feel the energy from your thigh joint, your hip joint to your knee. Just see what that energy feels like. What's going on in your thighs? Don't forget the back, back and front, and breathe. Now we're moving from the hip joint right up to through the belly, around the back, small of your back. Just let your mind be there. Just be aware of the energy, the tension, the, the openness, the expansiveness. Just breathe. Don't hold the belly. Just let it relax. See what you feel. If you feel anything that isn't of your liking or your pleasure, take a breath and let it go. Check that belly again. Right around the, the navel. You know, I don't care if the belly is flat or if it done lapped over your pants. I don't care. Search it. Get in there. That whole digestive system and the colon. All the, all the parts that we need for receiving and elimination. Check it. And breathe. Now we're moving from our rib cage up to our collarbone. That includes your breast, around the back, your shoulder blades. See what's happening in there. See what's happening in your shoulders. See how it feels. See what's happening in the center of your chest. Just be aware. Just be aware. Nothing to do. Check your breasts, ladies. Check your breasts. How do they feel? How's your rib cage? How's the center of your chest? How's your collarbone? And anything that feels tense or tight, just take a breath and let it be. Check your shoulder blades and come right up over the back of your shoulders. How does it feel? How does it feel? Take a breath and let it go. Now let's go down into the arms, the upper arm, the elbow, the lower arms, the wrist, the hands. Just check your arms, see how they feel. What's going on in there? How's the energy? Is it moving? Is it flowing? Is it tight, stagnant? And anything you feel that you'd like to transform, nothing to do, just take a breath and let it go. Now relax from your shoulders all the way down. Now we're gonna move into the neck back and front, your jawline, check your jawline, see how it feels, is it tight, is it tense, is it relaxed, inhale, let it go, check your cheeks now, your eye sockets, your ears, your forehead, your whole face, is it relaxed, is it tense, are you clenching your teeth, is there tightness, just check it. Take a breath and let it go. Now check your entire circumference of your head from the nape of your neck all the way around the circumference of your head. See how it feels. Just see how it feels. Nothing to do, just be aware. Inhale and exhale. Now relax. And notice your whole body. Just be aware of being home in your body. Notice any tingling, any tightness, any tension. Also notice any openness, expansiveness. Just notice. Now that you're aware of your body, find the natural rhythm of your breath. 
Find the rhythm of your breath. So that you're home and connected. Yeah. Inhale. And exhale. Now relax your shoulders. Relax your shoulders. And if you could just turn yourself inside out, focus all of your attention within. As if you could see yourself from the inside. As if you're looking in. Just check and breathe and be. And ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? This moment. What am I choosing in this moment? Keep breathing. What am I choosing? What do I need in this moment? What do I choose in this now? And just breathe. And relax. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyelids. And today, let us send love and light and healing energy all around the world to all of the people who are standing, who are walking, who are marching, who are saying hashtag enough. Hashtag no more. If you can remember a scene from the news or any place on the television screen if you've seen it. Just send love and light and energy out into the world. How about you just see a picture of the globe <laughs> and just send light and love and healing energy, healing energy right out to the world. Breathe. And join me in placing your hand over your heart. And as we're sending out this energy, we say, may you be safe from inner and outer harm. May you be clear and know clarity. May you know peace. May you know love. And we breathe. May you be safe from inner and outer harm. May you be clear and know clarity. May you know peace. May you know love. Yeah. Happy birthday. Today is not my birthday. I don't know where you got that from. That's because you're typing when you should be breathing. <laughs> yeah. We're sending light, love, and energy. I don't know if any of you all are going out today to the march in your city, but if you are, please take your mask, and may you be clear, and may you know peace, and may you be safe from inner and outer harm. Our reading today comes from How to See. How to See. A lovely little book from one of my teachers, Thich Nhat Hanh, the great Buddhist uh, teacher. He's a Zen master um, who's been teaching forever and ever. And uh, this book is entitled How to See. All right? How to See. I thought this was important based on the love. Thank you, South Africa. Uh, and today is not my birthday. And Billy is fine. Billy is at the aquatic, um, aquatic uh, safety preserve. So they're going to take care, good care of Billy. And Freedom's on timeout because she pooped on the floor. Okay. 
I can't even. <laughs> I can't, okay? My OCD is up. <laughs> All right, how to see. And what I'm reading today is called Letting Go. All right, so listen, letting go. Most of our feelings and emotions arise. Somebody was saying over there, I'm scared. So I want you to hear this. Most of our feelings and emotions arise from narrow perceptions and incomplete understanding. Our ways of looking, listening, reacting, and judging make us and our loved ones suffer. We have ideas about happiness and suffering that we can't let go of, though we know that by letting them go, we'll be happier and more peaceful in body and mind. And the painful feelings and emotions would no longer have a basis to arise. I want, to, I want you to get that. If we would let go of our perceptions, we would eliminate the painful thoughts and feelings and they'd no longer come up. But we have to let go. It's a choice. Here we go. We tend to think that if we let go, we'll lose things that make us happy. All right? But the opposite is true. The more we let go, the happier we become. I'm going to read that again. The more we let go, the happier we become. Letting go doesn't mean we let go of everything. We don't let go of reality. But we let go of our wrong ideas and perceptions about reality. Our view is our way of understanding the world that is based on our perceptions. Right view is a view that transcends dualistic thinking, a living insight into the reality of life. Right view is the first element and the foundation of right thinking, speech, and action. So right view is the foundation of right thinking, speech, and action. If we do not have right view, our thoughts, speech, and actions will not be skillful and we will indeed suffer. Okay? <laughs> For example, right thinking and right speech are based on right view and at the same time, they nourish our right view. Our happiness and the happiness of those around us depends on our degree of right view. With a daily practice of mindfulness, we nourish the seed of right view. Two things I want to repeat here. Most of our feelings and emotions arise from a narrow perspective, and incomplete understanding. I want you to get that, and I want you to get that we can let go knowing that if we let go of the narrow perceptions and the incomplete understandings, we would be happier. How to see. Thich Nhat Hanh. He's got how to see, how to fight, how to love, how to react. <laughs> All right. I want you to consider this affirmation and repeat it to yourself throughout the day as you go throughout the day. Just hold it in your mind and repeat it. I choose to let go of mental struggles. I choose to let go of emotional narrowness. I choose to see things rightly. I choose peace. Okay? I choose to let go. I choose. It's a choice. <coughs> a mental narrowness, 
of emotional confusion, we have to choose. So I want to speak to you briefly this morning because I know it's a beautiful day. It's a warm day and we want to get about our day. I choose to let go of mental struggle. Yeah. And you have to choose it again and again and again. We must, let me say this. Let me speak to you from today from the, on the topic of think higher. <laughs> think higher. I have been so aware this week of how narrow and limited people think. For some reason, we think that the way we see it, the way we understand it, is the way everybody sees it and understands it. And then if people don't see it and understand it or perceive it or receive it the way we do, we think they're wrong. And we go into immediate againstness. Think higher. I was driving yesterday and I just noticed as the trees are growing how they overlap each other. And I'm sure the maple doesn't argue with the, with the elm. And the magnolia doesn't argue, argue with, the, with the pine. They're just there, standing in their majesty and their differences and accepting one another. Why don't we do that? Why do we think that everybody has to see it the way we see it, hold it the way we hold it, and then when they don't, we go after them. You hold your pain the way you hold your pain. But don't expect everybody else to hold it that way. You hold your joy the way you hold your joy. But don't expect everybody else to hold it that way. You hold your view the way you hold your view. But as Thich Nhat Hanh told us this morning, many of the things that we hold as real come from a very narrow perspective. Very narrow. And that's what's going on in our world today. People see things from a very narrow perspective. And while they're out there marching together and coming up against a, a what seems to be in this moment a common enemy, there's going to come a moment when these differences are going to erupt in the street. I had a conversation, you know, I have a very large and diverse community. And I had a conversation with a group in my community. And I'm the only person of color in that group. And one of the things that was very um, concerning to me, all of these white women said to me, I don't know what to say, so I just keep my mouth shut. And I said, well, tell me more about that. And that what they said was, you know, I, I'm ashamed that I didn't understand this. I'm ashamed that I didn't see it. But there are questions that I want to ask. But when I ask them, what I get back is so aggressive, I'm, it frightens me said, okay. So I said, let me have a race consultation with white people. <laughs> I want to just give you an opportunity to ask questions that you may be afraid to ask. And as I said that, let me say to you what spirit brought to my awareness. As a person of color, and I am red and black and brown, red and black and brown, I am. I know the cellular memory, the DNA structure of being a descendant of those who were enslaved. And I know how I had to really think higher 
change my mind about who I was in the world because those memories were so alive in me. I am the descendant of those who were enslaved. I know what that trauma is. And I was reading something that a dear friend, Dr. Joy Guru wrote. Do we know the trauma of white people who were the descendants of the enslavers? What are they going through? What does it feel to live in this world today where you and be a descendant of those who enslaved the people that you're sleeping with, working with, living with, see on the train every day? We don't know that trauma and nobody has asked. So I'm going to ask because I've got to think higher. The same way people of color have to do the work and the healing to unpack and unlearn what is in our DNA as descendants of the enslaved white folk have to do the work to unpack and unlearn the energy in their DNA of being descendants of enslavers. And as I sat with it, I could feel the shame and the guilt and the confusion and the denial and the resistance, and the avoidance, okay? So, I'm going to have a conversation. Not a conversation. I think I want to be a safe place for white people to just ask what you need to ask so that I can explain it, because I'm black, brown, and red, okay? And I'm a cultural custodian. My black is not fashionable. <laughs> it's ancestral. My red is not fashionable. It's ancestral. Okay? White people. <laughs> Come on. Let's do a race consultation. So if you want to participate in this consultation where you can ask me anything so that I can explain it, share with you, give you the opportunity to think higher from a cultural, spiritual perspective. I want you to send me an email to iyamla at iyamla.com and just put in the subject line, racial consultation, racial consultation. Because so many of you want to know what to do right now. So many of you want to know how to support right now. And at the same time, you're, you're being a, accosted by um, white people and black people. Okay? <laughs> and I can imagine it's confusing. And then your DNA triggers up. And that white superiority and the white privilege and the white... All of that stirs up. And that may not be who you are, but the same way black people have to unlearn how to be enslaved, you have to unlearn being the descendant of the enslavers because I want you to think higher of yourself and of everybody else. Iyanla at Iyanla.com. Racial consultation. And I'm going to send you the link. And we're going to go on Zoom and we're going to have a conversation because I want you to think higher. Black people, you, you know, uh, uh, you, you, we got to think higher too of ourselves. Think higher. And let, we got to think higher of white folk. And we don't even think about the red people at all. And if we do, it's passing, okay? But this thing right here, they all out there in the street. This is turning around, so we have to think higher. We got to come up out of our narrow perspective. There are some things that we're going to have to let go of, and there's some things that we're going to have to really restructure. We have to restructure in ourselves so that we'll be able to move in this because everybody who's in charge, everybody who's making these changes, they're not going to see it the way we see it. 
you know, people are saying it's the police that's the that's the enemy, and they need this, but it's people's hearts. It's people's hearts. Because that 75-year-old man that they knocked down, that was a white man that pushed him down. Pushed him down and left him bleeding out his ear on the on the on the curb. <laughs> okay, so what happened? Mm -hmm. So my my goal as a teacher is to get us all. No, it's not open to black people. It's open to white people. Okay, black people. I'm here all the time. We gotta. They need to be able to ask some questions. You know, culturally, understand this culturally. There's some sacred work that women do. And there's some time when women have to come off together. I'm going to tell you about such a time, okay? Then there's some, a time that's work that men have to do. But then we get it all confused and we say, oh, it's separation. Oh, you believe in... No, I believe in the universe. And there's things that are feminine, things that are masculine, things women have to do, things men have to do. There's some things that people of color have to do. There's some things that uh, pe white people have to do. And you don't have to be in everything. Think higher. Don't think that because white people are over here doing something that you they doing it against you. And white people don't think that black people standing over here, that's a problem. You see three black boys on the corner, you, you, you lose your mind. Okay, clutching your purse to your bosom. Why? <laughs> okay? So it's not about separation. It's about the flow, okay? It's about the flow, all right? So that when we do come together, we are thinking higher of each other. And we're not feeling like we're missing anything, all right? There's some training, training that women have to do, training that men have to do, all right? And there's some training that white folk have to do. So I'm not talking about all the white people in the world. I'm talking about the ones that come here, the ones that trust me with their heart. And if you know some white folk that could trust me with their heart, Iyamla at Iyamla.com, racial uh, consultation in the subject line. And I'm going to send you the link. I'm not putting it out publicly because I don't want no, what they call the things, trolls and scrolls. Uh -uh. I want you to be able to ask the questions that are, are in your mind because, you know, one of the, without, you know, without the anger and the upheaval and make people making you think you're stupid okay all right think higher of yourselves beloved think higher of yourselves so many of us have been stuck in experiences situations circumstances that are so beneath us but because we won't let go we're suffering and we think we gotta have this gotta have this gotta let it go and if it's yours it'll come back and if it's not yours, something will replace it. Think higher. Some of us are so freaked out because we lost our job or we did so that. You know what? What can you create? What can you choose that's different? I lost my job. I lost my job. Me, Iyamla, not you, me. <laughs> but I'm thinking higher. I'm thinking higher. I lost my job. Okay, universe, what else do you have for me to do? So for 49 days, I came right here with you. Didn't make a penny, but felt great, <laughs> okay? And out of that came the spiritual warrior training. So what am I supposed to do? My job right now is to train spiritual warriors. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Think higher of your partner. Stop looking at what they ain't doing and can't do and what they don't do and boo, 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 boo. If you can't think higher of them, let them go. So that they can soar and you can soar and you can have what you want. Think higher of your children. When I was with my grandson yesterday, oh, it was just so refreshing. It was a lot of testosterone. Ooh. <laughs> 14 and 15. But I looked at them and I didn't look at them worried and scared about whether the police were going to get them. And one of them, his hair is locked like mine. It's just all over the place. And they're tall and they're both athletes and their pants was hanging down. And I was just loving up on them, thinking higher, not seeing them as victims of everything in the world and looking at them. And every time I looked at them, I just surrounded them in white light, surrounded them in white light, surrounded them in white light. So yes. They, there is a potential danger out there in the world, but it's not going to hit mine because I'm thinking higher. Can you hear me? Think higher of every 
everything of yourself. Think higher so that you're not dependent on everything out in the world. Think higher. Some things you're hanging on to are beneath you. Think higher. Some people that you think must be in your life don't have to be. They can be over on the shelf and you can wave at them. You don't have to throw them away. Think higher. Think higher, even of the government and the police. Think higher so that you'll know who to vote for and you'll know how to get out and register other people to vote. Think higher so that your creative gifts and abilities will unfold. Don't think that everything you do, you got to sell. Give. 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 Sell the best and give the rest. Think higher. Don't put a price tag on everything. Think higher. Think that some of the things that you're giving, you're giving to God, not to uh, people for a paycheck and a piece of money. Give higher. Give higher. Think higher. I'm saying give, give higher. Think higher. Yeah. This is the time. This is the time. We all have to think higher so that we can get through these changes that are coming. All right? Some of them we're not going to agree with. You don't have to agree. Can you support? Yeah? And think of it not just from your own little place, but from the good of the world. You know? Think higher. You know? Right now, you know, I, I just want to throw myself over an African drum, but I have to think higher and say, okay, who can the average white person go talk to and ask some questions? If that's me, okay, let me think higher. Let me think higher, because this isn't just about white people. This is about black people. I read Tim Wise's book, White Like Me, uh, Notes of a Privileged White Son. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I read another book called So You Want to Talk About Race. Yeah, I read that. And then I also read Michael Eric Dyson's book, Tears We Can't uh, Stop Crying, or Tears We Can't Cry. I, I, I don't remember the name of it. But it's all good. Why? Because I wasn't thinking high enough about race. I was thinking it was just my perspective. And I'm black and they're going to get me and I'm red and they ignore me and I'm brown and my babies are locked up down in the border city. Okay. But I had to think higher. So we all have to do that. Yeah? And do what you can. And I know that we are passionate as people of color, particularly, you know, the Latin part in me. Hey, I just kneel. <laughs> you know, the, the calm part of me, the calm part of me is the Native American side because, you know, we don't, we're not, we're not flappable. It's like, oh, hmm. okay. <laughs> but the Latin side and the black side, I'm, you know, I'm all over the place. All right, think higher, all right? Think higher. So this week when you, uh, uh, when you, well, let me see this. The book, okay, would you say, so I can do my part by helping my people understand things. I don't know which, who are your people, baby? I don't know which one. Oh, you know what? There's so much stuff out there right now. Uh, okay, somebody says here, I hate racism with my human eyes. Yeah. Waking Up White is another great book. Okay, I don't know that one, Waking Up White. Uh, thank you. I hate racism. We are humans in my eyes. Listen. Racism is one thing, beloved, but you have to see race. Otherwise, you decolorize people and negate their, their culture. Don't just, it's racism is one thing. Race is something else. You have to see, please don't see me as a white woman. I'm black and native. Don't see me as a white woman. Think higher. It's not race. It's racism. We got to see race. Otherwise, I can't, you can't appreciate me as a descendant of Africans, as a descendant of the Tisleki people. I want you to see race. I don't want you to be a racist, okay? Because one of the reasons that black people are walking around in tuxedos and ties and, and, and you know, thongs is because we were de stripped of our culture because our race was demoralized and diminished. Yeah, see race. Don't, see, don't be a racist. Okay, yes, I do speak Spanish. Let me say, I speak Spanish. I understand Spanish completely. But my mom, 
didn't want us to speak Spanish. She wanted us to be American. So my tongue never really got mm, acclimated to speak it, but I understand it. All right? I understand Spanish completely. And that's why I love when I go around uh, Spanish people and they see my black skin and they think I'm black and they start talking about me in Spanish. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Gracias. Mirera. Yes. So uh, my tongue never really got acclimated to it, but she would speak to us in Spanish and then we'd have to respond in English. <laughs> because back in the 50s, you, you didn't want to be Spanish. You were a dirty Puerto Rican. Because they, they thought all Spanish, Spanish people were Puerto Ricans. But the Puerto Ricans owned the corner stores. They owned the bodegas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So please, see race. Just don't be racist. Okay, I see. Okay, it's, it faded away. I see you speaking to me in Spanish. Now you asked me if I could speak it, senorita. Hola. <laughs> you asked me if I could speak it. You didn't ask me if I could read it. <laughs> All right. I got things for you. Let me shut up. Listen, a dear friend of mine, a dear friend of mine sent me this. And there is a four-part series for emotional clearing going on for women. And it's called the Sisterhood Swamp Series. And it's going to be four series where women come together and they show up. And it's an opportunity to heal hearts and create connections, all right? Call my name, sis. Bobby J. Bobby J., God bless you. You said I'm sober this morning. Good for you, Bobby. Good for you. Do it minute by minute, Bobby. Do it minute by minute. Don't try to do a whole day. Do it minute by minute. If you can stay sober minute by minute, that is your greatest service to God. When you're in recovery, any day you don't drink, is your service to God. Can you hear me? Okay. So the Sisterhood Swamp Series, it takes place, it's online. It's where women come together. Yes. <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> it's where women come together to heal their hearts. And it's being led by a wonderful sister. It's called, it's from the School of Womanly Arts. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, I'm going to put the link in the thread. It's called the Sisterhood Swamp Series. They meet, I think it's Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon or something like that. But anyway, how do, how, Mama V, how do I not cope knowing my DNA? You can know your DNA. Your DNA is in you. You don't have to know the people. You know your DNA. Look at your life. It'll tell you what your DNA is. Um, you know, it's work. It's work. Anyway, the Sisterhood Swamp Series. We're going to put the link in the thread so that you can do that. I also want to encourage you once again. Ivy Hilton, dear sister friend of mine. She does a sound spa every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's live on Facebook. And what she does is she uses the crystal bowls to create, like I have, my bowl is metal. But Ivy has an orchestra of crystal balls, okay? And she'd be playing them things. And all you have to do is sit and listen. We've got to elevate our energy. We've got to bring our energy up higher also, okay? So I want to encourage you, write that down on your calendar. Thursday nights at 7 p.m., Ivy Hilton live on Facebook in the Sound Spa, okay? Think higher, stay higher. All of you who are in recovery, all of you who are in recovery, because I know this is a tempting, tempting time. Do it one minute at a time, please. Do it one minute at a time. Yeah, Mama Gina, School of Womanly Arts. Oh, you know about that. Good. And she's doing the Sisterhood uh, Swamp Series, where women are coming together to heal their hearts and stuff. So what is this one saying? I've been diagnosed with depression. Oh, Lord. Let me get this out of here. I done did something. Uh, I've been diagnosed with depression. Uh, I can't see it. I lost you. All right. Make another choice, baby. Take your meds and make another choice. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to tell you if you need meds, take them right now, but make another choice. Make a choice to be free. All right. How's that? Everybody good? All righty. So the Sisterhood Swan Series, we're going to put the thread in um, tonight. Fear not on OWN at 9 p.m., which nobody is watching. So 
I'm going to tell you, when it's gone, it's going to be gone because nobody's watching it, and they are not going to keep playing the thing for nobody to watch it, okay? But I'm on tonight with Dr. Michael Beckwith, all right? My friend Michael Beckwith, and we have a good conversation about living beyond the virus. So that's tonight and own at 9 p.m., and then tomorrow, love from a distance. Wait a minute, hold up. Do you know who my guests are tomorrow? <laughs> her, okay? Her, you know, the fabulous her, because June is Black Music Month. So her and Rhapsody. I'm going to be talking to the youngins tomorrow about music. I love me some her. I want to know what H-E-R means. I want to know what that stands for. So her and Rhapsody are going to be Tina and my guests tomorrow on Love from a Distance and uh, tonight on OWN. And uh, did y'all do the spiritual uh, spa? All right. We're sending out the replay and we're also sending out the PowerPoint that I couldn't operate. <laughs> So I'm going to send it to you so you can see what the questions were. And Spiritual Warrior Trainings uh, starts. The, the um, orientation is Thursday. So if you want to sign up, sign up because we're getting ready to go. All right. What else? I'm not coming to y'all, nursing y'all every day. Oh, don't forget my white people. My white people, uh, racial consultation. Send, put that in the subject line. I don't need your story. I don't need your address. I don't need your mama's name. I just need racial consultation, and I'm going to send you the Zoom link so that we can come and you can ask me questions, okay, or share your thoughts and feelings, and let me support you in getting higher, letting some of that go. Iyamladiyamla.com. Uh, okay? All righty. I'm reading from a book by another one of my teachers, Louise Hay. Louise Hay. And this book is called Trust Life. Yeah? Trust Life. All right? And I'm reading from the um, passage on May 4th. Uh, May 4th. And this is what it says. I am willing to change and grow. All right? Um, relationships are mirrors of ourselves. What we attract always mirrors either the qualities we have or beliefs we have about relationships. That's all relationships. That's not just your lover, your husband, your partner. That's your siblings, your neighbors, your co-workers, okay? This is true whether it is a boss, a co-worker, an employee, a friend, a lover, a spouse, or a child. The things you don't like about these people are either what you yourself do not do or would not do or what you believe. Let me read that again. The things you don't like about these people are either what you yourself do or would not do or what you believe. You could not attract them or have them in your life if the way they are didn't somehow complement your own life. Okay, can you hear me? Do we not understand that what's going on in the world right now, even who occupies the White House, is a function of who we are? Do we not understand that? Louise Hay is saying it right here, okay? Think higher, think higher. That's how we're going to clean this up. Listen, look for a moment at someone in your life who bothers you. Just look at them for a moment. Bring somebody to mind. Somebody in your life that bothers you. Okay? Describe three things about this person that you don't like. Okay? Things you want him or her to change. Now, look deeply inside of you and ask yourself, where am I like that? And when do I do the same thing? See, we, we always busy looking out. We got to look in. Because everything vibrates at the same rate. If it's in your world, it's there because it's a function of something going on inside of you. We don't want to know that we all call this virus in. 
we don't want to know that we call this upheaval in. Not the specific little details, but we called it in. Close your eyes and give yourself the time to do this. Then ask yourself, are you willing to change? When you remove the patterns, habits, and beliefs from your thinking and behavior, either the other person will change, here comes, caught your pearls, or he or she will leave your life. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we think people are trying to get away from us, and it's the part of us that we've healed trying to leave. Let me run that by you again. Sometimes we think people are trying to get away from us when it's actually the part of us that we have healed leaving our life and we keep holding on to it. All right? I'm talking to the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Okay? Trust Life by Louise Hay. And earlier, we looked at Thich Nhat Hanh, how to see, all right? How to see so we can trust life, all right? <laughs> Deep bow. Deep bow to you. Be safe out there today, all right? Do your work. I'm not holding your hand. You got skills. Use them, all right? Use your skills. Breathe, clear, implant, scan your body, think higher. Bye.